It's time for Recipe of the Day. A little while ago, my grocery store had chuck roasts on sale, and so I did a lot of testing, and you are benefiting from that in the weeks ahead. I have a bunch of wonderful slow-cooked beef recipes coming your way, starting with today's Easy Shredded Beef. Now, chuck roast really is my favorite cut for any kind of like pot roast or slow cooked beef recipe. It just is in the right place in the Venn diagram between price and juiciness. You know, like there are a bunch of different cuts that are great to braise. Think about like oxtails and brisket and short ribs, but those ones are a lot more expensive, right? And so you don't want to like pot roast them or shred them up like we're doing today. You want to save them for something a little bit more special. On the other hand, there are cuts that tend to be less expensive. Think about like a round roast, rump roast, bottom round, eye of round, any of those kinds of things. They're not as like juicy. They don't have as much marbling, they're not going to be great. They're not great roasted in a dry roast method, really, and they're not going to be as juicy and wonderful in this method. So I really, really love a chuck roast. If you haven't made one lately or ever, grab one. You're going to love it. Now, just don't confuse it with chuck eye steaks. Those are actual grilling steaks. You want the chuck roast. Sometimes it's called a chuck steak, but trust me, it's not going to say I. So you want something that says chuck steak or chuck roast, and you're going to be braising that, not grilling it. It's nice and thick, like a good one and a half to three inches thick. So it's not something that you're sticking on the grill for like your steak dinner, you know? Okay, I am giving you instructions today for how to do this in the slow cooker, how to do this in the oven, and how to do this in the instant pot. But don't worry, it's not going to take long because it is really simple. This is just a wonderful like meal meal prep kind of thing. It's very hands-off, very simple, and then you can use it just as it is, kind of like pot roast or shred it up, put it in tacos, put it in like an Italian beef sandwich. Yes, I'm coming back to tell you about these things in the weeks ahead. Don't you worry. Okay, so slow cooker. What you're going to do is you're going to season that roast all over with salt and pepper. We're doing a two and a half pound chuck roast with one teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. So it's covering it all over with that seasoning. If you want to add more seasonings, you can But into that slow cooker, you are putting some salsa, a whole cup of salsa and a large onion sliced. And then you're going to nestle that seasoned roast in there. And so it's going to get the flavors from the onion and the salsa and the salt and pepper that you put on it. So I don't think it needs anything else. So you've nestled that seasoned roast into the onion and salsa. And then you're going to pour some beef broth over top, one cup, and then put the lid on your slow cooker. And you're cooking it on low for six hours or on high for four hours. Take the roast out of the slow cooker at that point. Then you're going to shred it with two forks so you get those nice strands. And then you can just have it like that. But I like to strain off those veggies from the salsa, the onions in the liquid. Use a slotted spoon or pour it through a sieve and then stir those vegetables into the beef. It's going to moisten it really nicely. Now, if you did use one of those leaner cuts that I recommended you not use, you can also stir in some of the braising liquid just to moisten that all up a little bit. That's going to help for for sure. I'd give the beef a taste at that point and add a little bit of salt and pepper if you'd like and then dig in or pack it up for the fridge to use later in the week. Okay, doing this in the oven is almost the same. It just takes less time. So this is what you would do if you didn't want to just leave it on the countertop cooking while you're away at work or something like that. So you're going to preheat your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to get out a baking dish big enough to fit your chuck roast. And this actually is a great method for using if you want to do a whole bunch of these because you can do more than one baking dish at a time or get a dish big enough to fit two or three of them. It's going to work as long as they're at least half submerged. Each one has to be at least half submerged in liquid, okay? So oven at 300, you've got your baking dish. Into the baking dish, you are putting that sliced onion and that cup of salsa, and you're seasoning your roast all over in the same way with the salt and pepper, and then nestling it into that salsa onion mixture. Then you pour the beef broth over top, put the lid on the baking dish, and put it into the oven for two hours. So it's the same thing. Then you're taking it out, shredding it with two forks, add those veggies that you sifted out of there, and you're good to go. Now the Instant Pot is just just a little bit different. I tested doing exactly the same thing. It didn't work quite well. So the instructions are just a little bit different with the same basic ingredients. You're actually going to measure the broth and the salsa into the instant pot. So it's a cup of each. And then you're cutting your beef into four pieces. I just found that it cooked way more evenly if you did this and a little bit more quickly. And you're not seasoning 
the beef first. It just goes straight into the instant pot, just in with the broth and the salsa. And that's because I find that the salt just kind of went washing off of it. And there was enough salt in the beef broth and the salsa. It kind of like permeated it well enough without needing to add more. Okay. So your pieces are going in there, sort of turn them around, turn them in there. So they're all getting coated in that salsa beef sauce. And then put your sliced onions on top of the beef. Then you're going to seal the instant pot, set it to high pressure for 40 minutes. So it's going to come up to pressure, cook for 40 minutes. Then you're going to do a natural release of 15 minutes. Then turn that valve to venting. When all the pressure is out, you could take the beef pieces out, use your two forks to shred it, use a slotted spoon to scoop up some of those onions and salsa veggies and throw those in and then give it a taste and season with salt and pepper at the end. There you have it. Shredded beef cooked in three very simple hands-off ways. I think it really just comes down to how much time you have in the end, right? I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there. And all of those methods are at the same link. So you're just going to one place, the easy shredded beef on cookthestory.com. And I'm going to tell you, if you enjoy learning cooking from me, you should sign up for my mini courses. These are email courses, super simple, but you get great tips every day for a few days. I think you're really going to like them. Head to cookthestory.com slash courses and you will get even more of my recipes and great tips so that you become a better cook every day. I am Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. <laughs> 